Alright. Oh, look. They're coming up in chat. Perfect. Alright, I'm gonna mute you real quick so I can hear your stream. Alright. See if everything is working out. And uh, do you have your microphone bar slid all the way to the right? No, I'm quiet. Do you want me to put it back to zero? Is this fine? Is this gonna be good? Am I loud enough? That's better. Hey, we've got people. Yeah, my. Yeah, um, the little microphone bar on the right hand. Um, I can talk. Uh, the little mute button that you pushed for. Mm -hmm. The thing is yourself. all the way over that now. I, I had it lower because it was blasting okay. people's ears out before. Oh well, it's good now for me. It was pretty quiet mm -hmm. before. If it's blasting people's people's ears out, then they need to turn down their volume because hey, everybody. I have Spotify playing. Hello. I'm trying to decide which character, because I have 13 on there, and I'm also posting everywhere on... You can also just roll a d12. <laughs> Do you want to roll d12? It, it would be. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't... I, don't I mean, I have some d12s around. I will... We'll compare. We'll do... These are the two we'll be doing. I rolled a 7. I should roll a 7, too. Don't roll... I'm not joking. I just rolled a 7. Well, <laughs> I'm rolling again. I rolled a 2. Oh, all right. Well, I'll roll again. Fine. I guess we're not doing seven. Roll the six. But why? What's wrong with seven? I'm now I'm offended for whichever one is seven. One, two, three. That's the tiefling Default. noble. Oh, they're wrong. Whatever they are. So it's two and six then. Uh, two. Two is the dwarven woman. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no! Wait, the tiefling noble was a six. The ghost child was seven. So every uh, all of these dice wanted a ghost child. So, a so should we child. do should we do seven and thirteen then? Since I rolled a seven, which technically we couldn't do, which would probably mean it should have been thirteen because we were rolling a d twelve. So <laughs> okay, like... so thirteen is a very complicated one, which is why I wasn't. Oh, really oh okay. Well, yeah, that's going that's to do then. it because it would take all stream to work on that one character. Uh, okay, yeah, then we can do two and six. All right, two. We'll go to the dwarf woman. How is everybody doing? Hi, chat. Yeah. If you've watched these streams before, you know exactly who I am. My yes, little character my isn't on screen right now. I am. I am the narrator moderator. Yeah. Oh, I'm it's a regal looking dwarven woman. I'm primarily the main interaction with chat, because uh, Vanessa has a really difficult time drawing and talking. Paying attention to my other screen over my shoulder is inefficient while I'm drawing, yes. So you'll have to let me know if there's a reason yeah, to look at chat. If people there's no to... reason ever to look at chat. Oh, come on. I love when people interact with my stuff. Whether that's my webcomic. Ah, uh, yes. I... Mm. Wonderful groceries. Yeah. I just finished eating food uh, oh. that I bought like two or three days ago because I too had grocery shopping done. I turned off my music. That's why I am fancy. Yes, because you were trying to listen to chat or uh, stream. Stream. Did you turn your music on? Nope. Okay. I figured if there were people, if there's mm -hmm. a, there was someone talking with me, then I would be talking. Oh, oh. If I was right, alone right, right. and trying to come up with stuff, I would probably have tried to get the music to work. But. What did you? Uh, what did you end up eating for food? Not. Not Vanessa chat. I had lo mein. I made air quotes homemade lo mein, which is basically taking a bag of frozen vegetables, throwing it in the pan, adding uh, oyster sauce, and 
soy sauce and then putting it over noodles. Bagel. Hey, look, don't don't diss the bagels. I have I have been I want lunch. I don't know what to eat. I'm just gonna eat a bagel and then go back to doing whatever I was doing. I mean, it was delicious. It also had beef in it because uh, I cooked the meat. Beef lo mein. Yeah, beef lo mein. Nice. Uh, the one the one difficult thing about beef is if you don't tenderize it, it can really get difficult trying to keep it tender, but not like undercooked. <laughs> hmm. Missing all of the juices. So if anyone wasn't aware, I'm doing these for my next art pack. I did 10 characters for my first one um testing the waters doing full body and a portrait and this time i'm doing only portraits so that i can do more characters i think i i have plans for at least 20 for this pack and i'm not sure how to price it i'm gonna figure that out down the line but they'll be up on the same places ah, i hate when it comes down to the bottom like that when is this gonna work Okay, it did. There we go. And there we go. Um, yeah. So this next one is was voted on, and it's going to be alluring villains. So they're all going to be villainous in some way, and I'm trying to make the typical ones because, of course, people want the typical as well as some out of the box kinds like celestials because I feel like there's not enough celestial uh, monsters in D&D &D, as I there's obviously loads of fiends and, and the such there I think there's only stat blocks for about six six or seven celestial type creatures mm. yeah it's uh it falls into the realm of uh one creature's truthfulness and goodliness does not always align with another creature's truthfulness and goodliness yeah. so and just who's because... to say the demons are wrong and who's to say the celestials are right yeah exactly sometimes you just want to fight some angels you know sometimes some people have some like repressed uh you know christian guilt they want to get out by kicking some ass with some angels i don't know <laughs> I can't kick real God's ass. I'm gonna do the next best thing and kick it in this tabletop game. <laughs> exactly. And hey, Yeah. So I I threw in a couple of celestials that might do a couple more. Honestly, might I'm looking at like the themes of some of these, and I'm just like, should I should I make a celestial pack? Like I don't know. I feel like the villain thing in general should be should be a thing on its own and then think of expanding into other packs later but i think you're doing it right by pulling what packs you want to do and just doing like a a set of four ideas and just letting people decide because ultimately obviously you want to sell these so yeah getting the uh getting the ideas from the public is always good exactly um Eon says, uh, yeah, Celestials will get pretty shafted as uh, as well as Fey. They have, like, no stat blocks above CR7. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I, I also got to say it's probably a part of game design. Um, not not is designed to be that way, but more so that uh, creatures above a higher CR are get significantly less likely to be seen in game. So they were probably like, okay, well, what's the most common thing to see in in the okay. game and you don't think like, that most characters when they get to a higher level want to kick god's asses like well i think it's more along the lines of like they're not gonna fight the god they're gonna be like friends with the god all right um, we will flash back to a no we're not gonna do this no <laughs> no we're leaving we out of this <laughs> to a we certain out of this. He did character nothing. of yours who wanted to fight gods <laughs> look it's not my fault <laughs> Yes, it was. It was completely your fault that that happened. Like, I'm really a bitch, okay? 
<laughs> well, that's literally her name. That is her nickname, canonically. Yeah. I, I'm not even so, joking. That's what Mr. Zuzakos okay. says. Well, if I'm going to be Ozron, I'm going to tell you, well, I'm not going to go fight just any gods or deities. I am going to go fight the biggest ones. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight the ocean. Apparently, I'm gonna fight the entire ocean. He's just gonna have fish slapped at his face constantly. <laughs> There's gonna be an octopus that gets thrown and it's just like beak and eyeball. It's like your latest video on uh, on YouTube. Oh god, yeah, the kraken just drives you in. Kraken just drags you in. You can see Ozran getting like the breathing underwater spell or something like that, and just being like, ah, jokes on you. I'm stuck down <laughs> here for now, forever now, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Also, Nick Nick liked your uh, sound effects for your flashback. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Batman. Exactly. Batman. Yeah, pull that in. So, yeah. So there's celestials. I have. Let's see. What else do I have? I have a ghost child because. I, I love creepy little children in these things and dolls especially I'm sure my my <laughs> my host here can say a lot about that you had a lot of fun with the, with the doll Hi, would you like to play with me <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh this is fucking terrifying I do not want to touch you at all <laughs> Please put away the tea set. I am leaving. <laughs> yeah, she had the ability to like freeze you up to, uh, and like take o take you over for take over your a yeah. little bit. Yeah. You're drinking mud. Mmm, delicious mud. I I once had a player like eating the, and peeling off like the wallpaper, and like pe <laughs> bits of like the wood on the stairs to eat that. Uh, mm. and stuff. Wallpaper lasagna. Mmm. I uh, I think that's one of my pet peeves with D and D. Sometimes is that the people, people don't like giving their characters flaws. They want to be like, "Fuck, this doesn't scare me." Mm -hmm. I love to fall being terrified of the, the creepy, doll thing, because <laughs> it just didn't make sense. Like, yeah, I loved. That it's thing. like. It's like fall fall is a tabaxi, right? So it's like a cat and like, you know, those are dolls, those are the things that you chew up. It's like having uh I guess for humans it would be like the equivalent of having a an, a thing you plan on killing just start talking to you. <laughs> like you're going hunting with like a shotgun or something like that, and you're going hunting for deer, and the deer just walks up to you and just starts going, What you doing? You wanna play? And you're just like, ah why? <laughs> You start rethinking your life choices that led you to that place. <laughs> yeah. It's awful and amazing. And one of those moments as a DM that I definitely enjoyed thoroughly. Especially the number of times you had to kill it because you didn't properly kill it. Yeah. Which was the best yeah. part. The cat came back, only it's the doll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Fantastic. Oh, I don't have any of my... I deleted all my soundboard stuff. <laughs> I can't annoy... I can't annoy stream with... Oh, no. You can't annoy oh, no. stream. I can do this, though. Oh, God. I'm not actually going to do that again. I need to turn off that... That effect. <laughs> I am blind. Where's the uh, where's my thing? Oh, I'm drawing a little uh, braids. It's a lot of fun. Is her face fuzzy? What do you mean? No, those are just the uh, those are just the hairs coming off the braids. Yes, like you know when it's pulled tight and you just see like yeah, yeah. the little frays. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like questioning if she just had really weird beard shape, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like. I, I've woven my uh, I've woven my braids into my beard. Mm. I am dwarf. I mean, not unheard of. It'd actually be kind of cool to have a dwarf design where where the dwarf has like, uh, like his bangs. 
like across the front of his face and then like tied into his beard like, you, like you're looking through a cage or something and it's like a war tactic yeah i like it people get really creative with the beards for dwarves my last pack had a dwarf that was a, a blacksmith and he had like one of those short beards because i figure there should be representation like range in beards for dwarves this he's is short, true yeah short fuzzy beard he's a black man so he's got like you know the curly textured hair it's very nice yeah stuff. i mean also if you're you gotta you gotta think like it's always good to put that, that like touch of realism in because one of the things you want to be careful with is uh you know if he's a blacksmith that's a fire hazard yeah he's not gonna have a huge beard that's gonna get in the way but he's still a dwarf. He's not going to not have a beard. Not have a beard, yeah. Yeah. Level, okay, non-animation. Uh, chat. Um, Nick says uh, that they love your PNG tuber. And <laughs> uh, someone else agreed with me that they thought it was a braided beard too. So, you know. They like it though. They clarified that they like it. It's, um, it's technically... Uh, Bunt jobs, what she's got. Oh, if, okay, it, that makes way more sense. If, if that helps, it's it's mutton yeah. chops. It's not a full beard because the beard is underneath, gotcha. right? She's okay. it's braided down the sides of her face. Yeah, she's a dwarf, but she's also a woman who wants to look. Look, she's got like little bows in them. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's a really cool design. It's a different take on like that's like uh you know the whole. Uh, I mean, it depends on, you know, what you do with your story, but the whole, like, even dwarven women have beards, and it's, like, a symbol yeah. of, like, strength. And I'm like, I mean, I don't want to seem weak, but also, yeah, I would like to not have to deal with the fuzzies under my face. I gotta keep that clean, but also pretty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's exactly... Like what I would expect from a feminine dwarf is like it is manicured or, well, whatever, <laughs> femicured. <laughs> no, manicure is has to do with nails, but <laughs> you got yeah, the spirit. I know. I know. I, it's it is <laughs> taking care of some. <laughs> uh. It's got some blacksmith like steel beers. Oh my god, that'd be so cool. What? I want like, I want I want elementals and dwarfs to have children and have a sub race of elemental dwarfs where their hair is are are literally metal. Like cool, yeah. Like their skin, their skin and hair are like infused with the the element of whatever they were doing. So like, uh, iron or uh, copper or whatever. And their beard and hair is literally the metal they're working with, so they can blacksmith with full beards. <laughs> and also, the whole society would be based around the fact that, like, when you give a present or something like that, you make it out of your own hair and you melt your hair down. That's terrible. Your metal hairs down yeah. into, like, a ring or, like, a, a signet or, like, something to give to another person. I made this for you. It's like. <laughs> literally it's, it's like van, me. van gogh but like elevated because it's like he, yeah it's, it's it's part of me you know it's not as painful as ripping an ear off to to gift yeah. it to you but oh god and that would explain why their hair and beards would be so long is because like well we don't cut it because if we had to cut it we would just burn through scissors and stuff like that because it's all metal we can't cut it we have to thank you for following we have to boil it down or like, you know, to get rid of it, you would literally have to put it in. in it's uh, like that whole argument of like, how does um, Superman cut his hair? Because yeah. he shouldn't be able to because, yeah, unless it was like Kryptonian like scissors or whatever. And it's like, how does a, a beard that is made out of metal and the hair, or never mind if, if their beard is like that, then their rest of their hair, you would assume, is also made of the same material. Mm -hmm. And it'd also be really interesting to wonder, like, 
like what their kinship would be with metalworking because when you think about it right if if you're if you have a very close biological nature to metal would would it actually be off-putting to work with the material would it remind yes. you too it, much of yourself <laughs> and, and actual people yes it, rem it reminds me of those people who will collect their like pets hair and like weave yeah. like a whole sweater out of it but but elevate it because that would be like their own hair that they would weave a sweater out of and you're like where does the, the, the flesh end because this is technically what part of a growth from your body mm -hmm. yeah it's, it is super interesting to think about whether or not their society would be based like like viewing it from our point of view in that manner to be like no we don't use metal things like we don't we don't use metal pots. We don't use like anything that's related that's to metal disgusting. because it, it's it, it, cause, yeah. Because why would you do that? That's like using that's like the equivalent of using a pot of flesh for boiling water. Yeah. Or would it be on the? Would it be the other way around? Would it be like this is the most economical we could be? We were using every part of the buffalo essentially. Yeah, or it's like our skins are flesh. It is only our hair that grows that is metal, yeah. and we have a more close relationship to humans. And we take what we were given in the form of being able to grow these these metal items to always have wire on you or to like always have the capability of you know picking locks or whatever you just you know pick it and, and and like humans you know we have humans with thinner hair and some humans with really thick hair and like you actually have different like gauges of like wire oh, that's wild almost. yeah so you're thinking like you're thinking people would literally be able to sell their very thin hair because it would be harder to manufacture something like that into like intricate tools and like intricacies of inlays and stuff like that. So you'd want like thinner hair. But on the flip side, if you have really big bushy hair that grows a lot, you could mass produce. I don't know, it's, it's crazy to think about it. I complete, completely got off topic for the stream. I just got. I mean, that is on topic. Of... We're still talking about beards and, and dwarves, and that is what I'm drawing, so. I just, like, that's not even getting into like, like anything you know, sapphire or 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 mineral based, mm -hmm. you know, the whole subterranean culture. And, like, you want to put a hierarchy to it? Like, you can hierarchy this whole thing because you'd have like, you know, the whole like sorcerer bloodline thing in D and D, where when you're a sorcerer, you're like, oh, I have this innate blood function to to cast magic. I am better than those who have to learn it. And it's like people who have minerals like iron copper and stuff are lower down but then you'd have dwarves with like what if they grew gold from their beards or and then even higher than that you know what if um what if minerals were even more valuable what if people could grow uh you know like sapphire yeah or rubies or whatever i'm pretty sure if you mix these this metal dwarf that we've made up and like a genasi an earth genasi you could just completely farm metals and and gemstones with the right. That's so of wild to think about it. <laughs> a feature in D and D of like you are your own spell component, like yeah, like for instance, being being of that origin of that race would mean that whenever you t if you take a spell casting class, you are your own spell casting component, and you. I'm like pretty once sure a week. one of them at least considers that because I know a lot of the, um, a lot of the spells that innate spells that your race races have. There's like stuff where it's like, oh, you don't need spell components. Like you can cast those spell components. Now I'm just imagining that equivalent is like when you cast anything that requires element of your choice, you don't require the spell component because you literally create that spell component i was i was thinking it would be it would be interesting for like let's say let's say you're ruby uh ruby genasi or ruby dwarf or whatever the the way to balance it in my mind would be that you don't require spell components if you keep the concentration of ruby in your body but once a week you have the option to produce a gem ruby gem worth like 50 gold pieces but if you decide to do that the following week you can't use yourself as a spellcasting focus so 
you can either be a spell casting focus or you can produce material cost material components for spells you can literally sell your body you just came up with literally a different way of, of being prostitute. a prostitute in D &D. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god okay eon says funny story a friend of mine made a bunch of meat based subclasses for a homebrew game where an infection of flesh has grown through the earth similar to darkest dungeon one of the subclasses is a meat fighter who can make stuff with their flesh from weapons and tools. And this combo is making me think of that. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure meat fighter might get you like put on some sort of list. But yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just picturing the how I met your mother. That's a penis. <laughs> Terrible. No, 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 sir. I was watching a thing today about like picks of the ancient uh pick tribes and how they used to uh, paint their bodies you know blue and uh and were severely tattooed and one of the things was that they uh, as a, a intimidation tactic they fought in the nude they completely stripped down just go go to town to like fight the guy one-on-one -on -one. you're like slipperier and, <laughs> and dude honestly uh, I've had so many nightmares of like, like as a male, one of my nightmares is whenever I get into a fight, the person in my in, in that I'm fighting against always grabs onto my nether region and just squeezes and puts me in a lock. No, that's it's so terrifying. painful. I can't move. Oh, it is the worst. I have, I don't have a lot of dreams about getting into physical confrontation because of that. Most of my dreams are like, um. I get into confrontations psychically or like kinetically, like, you know, telekinetics or your brain's like, or this was I just too cruel. Yeah. Or I just literally hit them with a thunderbolt. I have hit people with thunderbolts before. The downside to that is, um, my, my nightmares follow one of two categories. Um, mother nature or space. And the reason for that is that, for some reason, I'm a little over logical. So people being crazy, murderers, you know, those whole things, not a problem. Animals attacking me, not a problem. Tornadoes, hurricanes, and earthquakes are terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. Because in my dreams, I cannot control them because they are so large scale. I have controlled weather and stuff like that. But it always comes back in like storms and like really nasty tornadoes and stuff like that. Um, so the unfortunate thing about hitting somebody with a bolt of lightning is where the bolt of lightning comes from. <laughs> so, so in this instance, I actually ended up having a, a a relatively uncomfortable dream afterwards. I wouldn't call it a nightmare so much. Um, nightmares are very select dreams. Um, I wouldn't call it a nightmare. I just call it like you know a little scary dream. Uh, okay, a scary dream. And how was it? Uh, most of the time, I hunker down, close my eyes, and imagine it goes away. Um, and for the most time, it most part it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I get whipped up into the tornado and literally thrown out of Earth's atmosphere into space where I suffocate and die. Cool. Um, Love that. Yeah. Not. No, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's bad. Um, so let's get away from that topic because that's just horrific. Uh, well, we can move into the topic of like, I have no capability of understanding height from the ground to space like in my dreams if i fly i'm always worried i'm gonna end up in space like i i conceptually understand there's like thirty thousand miles of atmosphere that we have or some i don't know i think it was thirty two thousand, but we have a lot of atmosphere and the further away from earth you get the slower earth actually leaves because of scale and pers perspective and like you can spend a long time traveling at terminal velocity before you get to Earth. In my dreams, I'm like three seconds into the air, and I'm like, I am touching space. <laughs> Everything is gone. I, I just see the clouds. All I'm in space. All logic is just abandoned. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. It is completely gone. It is wild. Your dreams are like terrier lands. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, how many miles Earth atmosphere? It's not three thousand. 6,000 miles. Uh, planet to six, about 6,000 miles above, above Earth. So you just no, got to calm down. Nightmares are when I start having things growing out of my leg. 
No, we are not talking about this. <laughs> this is not uh, what people have tuned in for. This is a nice, calm no, I- drawing stream. No nightmares. No nightmare feel. These are the only nightmares are these villains that I'm drawing. <laughs> so we won't talk about the 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 no. mouth thing that I no. made you end up having a dream about immediately after telling you. Yes, because I don't want to spread that that awful. I don't understand what is wrong with my dreams. No. Anyway. So, let's see. What else? Eon says uh, they gotta go and to have a good stream. Yeah, thanks for dropping by. Bye. Have a wonderful time. And, let's see. Designs are always fun to try and incorporate in these things. I mean, you can you can just be like, I mean, I can make up races and all sorts of interesting things on the spot. I am a. No, I uh, sorry, I'm drawing the clothes right now, and um, so I'm oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, just yeah. literally doing patterning and. It looks like, it reminds me of those those like plush seam material. Like. Almost like a blanket. Or it kind of like dips in a little bit and then like Colted. it gets sewn in, but it's like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Duh. I don't have the brain good. <laughs> I'm going to just try and get that closer here. Um, What's chat doing? I realize we're off on a tangent. I should check in with you guys. Yeah. I'm trying to get that. All of this. Also, if you're lurking, by the way, appreciate you having, you know, view counter and all that stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoy the background noise and podcast. Yeah. I also, check out my webcomic. Cause that starts next Tuesday. Chapter 6. And the first page gets posted. It's right now. Uh, it has the, the cover up for, for that. Excited about this one. It's gonna be good. All of them are good, but this one's gonna be good too. Uh, someone just posted yes. Uh, like five exclamation points. So excited. <laughs> so one of my superpowers with my ADHD <laughs> is the capability of going off on a topic that I I know about so chat mm-hmm. if you want me to talk about something specific feel free to let me know uh, well, i was and thinking I can, about we could I can do spend it. world <laughs> stuff about my world because i can talk about that and i would actually incorporate me instead of whatever hour our well, hour well i i'm just i'm just saying you know you're doing the drawing thing i don't want to distract you by having you talk about stuff because you're the visual pre- presentation right now mm-hmm we are, we we are doing the first one, who is a dwarf. Um, but most of these are pretty generic because I wanted to be able to just insert them in people's campaigns. Um, so this one's just a dwarven woman who, I don't know, DM will decide. It's a dwarf woman. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure, DM will decide. She's she looks kind of regalish. She could be a highborn. Into some stuff. Uh, Mm-hmm. It says they are in a uh, they're in a Street Fighter tournament, enjoying the conversations. Nice. That sounds like fun. Good luck. At... I I personally can never really get into fighting games. I like, was I think the only fighting game that I was like really into was is it TF- Smash Brothers. TF two. For oh, I was I was like shooting. That's a shooting game. That's not a fighting game. Come on now. Okay, sorry, I don't That's know a, the, the genres, the, the separate genres of fighting game versus okay. shooting game. So, so like, so like fighting games are like brawlers. They're like, you know, the Smash Brothers, the Mortal Kombat, the, okay. the Smash Brothers. Then, and I, I played the hunts of that in college. I was, I was, I was always a button spammer. Well, I yeah, that's the only way you minute. can do it. People who like, memorize the the combos are the combos? insane. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, like, I feel like there's a curve, right? I feel like 
you're you're a button spammer be, and, and being a spammer of buttons the opponent really doesn't know what the hell you're doing because it's that whole like drunken fist thing. <laughs> yes but neither uh, do you that's why i play a good kirby yeah <laughs> 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 I well, I could never. So because because I could never really get things down, uh, I, I I never had to like the reaction times to like like seeing two people who actually know the game fight each other is crazy to me because it's like it's like watching the because the opponent knows what they're fighting and I think that's the most important thing is like the button mashers don't know you know what their opponent's moves are or like what they can do in a given situation so you're just stuck like guess working what they're gonna do and when and you manage point, to hit something you're like holy shit uh I w i'll never be able to do that again but that was really cool that combo oh that God, i just did the, yeah that super ultimate mega combo where it's like it ends with a grab and if you hit them it does like half of their health in a crazy animation you were like i yeah. have no idea how i did this but cool and the other person who who has memorized everything has rarely used that because they wait for the most opportune moment and they're like and you just managed to find it yeah, it's accidentally. Set up yeah. <laughs> no, I was you do like, combo once. You can do it again. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Bumble, spam. You were what? Sorry. I was a uh, yeah. I was gonna say TF2 stuff was was more of a as you said a first person shooter kind of thing. But I I treated that the same way because I played the pyro and it was fire fire everywhere everybody is lit on fire <laughs> this wasn't really a shooter at that point it was just you running around lighting things yeah on fire. i didn't shoot shit i can't aim yeah fire doesn't need to aim fire just needs to get oh, close get to the you <laughs> uh, it was beautiful general direction burn everything alive exactly i did well i i was in like competitive i um I did a bit of competitive and shooting games. Um, I got way up there in Overwatch one time. Like I, I got into um, like the top one percent or point one percent of that game. Um, That's so scary to me. Yeah, I I got really good in Overwatch back when it came out. Literally in the first like four seasons. Now they're on season like twenty something. Um, I got really good at it, but I just. I couldn't care for it. Like it didn't feel like a game anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like like, Felt like I play games to, to be just... silly and have yeah. Yeah. Yep, I know I, I play agree. Games to have fun. Yep. That's at the end of the day what it should be. Hey, thanks Artistles. Hey, you know what? We love lurkers. Uh all that matters is that you're listening to us and that you don't <laughs> stop listening to us. Don't be creepy. I'm going to be creepy. Boots uh, um, let's see. Nick says, love TF2. Talking more since I got knocked out of the loser's bracket. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> womp womp. I would love to see tabletop games that have a little more of like a... Kind of a mechanical aspect to them. Oh, there's so many. If you go into the indie scene, you can find anything you want. Any flavor. Well, I was thinking like... Okay, so so something that would be cool is kind of like integrating... Integrating like a feature for each class that, have the, that has its own little dice game. Right? So like, you know, like, like games like Yahtzee and stuff like that where you have to try to add things up or do things with a set of dice. I think it would be very interesting to have... Um, something gamey gaming like that it's kind of like almost like an ultimate right where mm -hmm. throughout the game while you're fighting or you're doing things you're, you're constantly rolling and planning and organizing this subsection like between combat or between rounds of like you know building up the ultimate or something like that and it's like if you get you know so for instance let's say um let's say something along the lines of, even so simple as you have 66 and you roll 66 and if you get a six you keep it but you can only roll once between your turns and the goal is to get all 66 on six and then you can do like an ultimate attack for your action on the following turn so some, it, some underground kind of, level of like yeah it kind of sounds like 
almost like trying to activate the breath weapon for a a dragon when you yeah you have to like recharge it essentially yeah but it gives like more of a a tangible thing that can kind of continue to go on through through the different turns because i'm not gonna lie i don't really necessarily enjoy the fact that D's combat system is very per turn based you know what i mean it's very your turn comes up you do the thing your turn ends and your subsequent turns are almost completely separate and you, you know the only you didn't even play 4e where that felt like a round could take an hour essentially with with how long it took Ugh. i love that i, just, I yeah. love that addition by the way i should clarify just I'm not, yeah i'm not uh, ragging on it <laughs> <laughs> i uh i i agree i feel like i feel like the lack of carryover makes the combat in 5e feel very very smash person until hit points go to zero mm -hmm. even no matter how hard the dm tries and i and being a dm and you being a dm obviously we have you know, little things in there that we kind of like we sprinkle in to make combat a little different regen hp or you know weird mechanics that definitely don't normally belong in the game but even still it still just feels like as a player my actions are so segregated between turns that there should no be more build up. yeah there should be more that's like a combo that you can combo with your team this should be a team yeah. game that you should like be able to set up something for someone else's right? class like if if you have a rogue on your team and you are also a paladin like you are able to do x and x and y because they decided to use this sneak attack availability it's yeah. it gets yeah. really i think that's what what the, they tried with 5e was to simplify but they simplified to a degree too much that it's almost boring like uh to combat which i I'm, i don't like mm. combat to begin with so the adding in an aspect like that would complicate you know it for new players who are trying to who are like what you know i could or people would be trying to play a certain class because it it works better it almost reminds mm -hmm. me of like what when you were playing like um and trying to get me into like final fantasy and you were like yeah the healer will get through to like these challenges faster because people want them more and you're like so yeah. more people fewer people want to play it but they get rewarded to be like this and it's like cool so in this aspect fewer people would want to play whatever because it doesn't do big spectacular thing but you get rewarded mm -hmm. because if you do play it you know yeah i i i, I think i think the interaction between classes outside of spells is really lackluster like yeah outside of when, like the, the like, buff spell or like occasional buff spell or like yeah um controlled spell kind of thing or twin yeah spell. Dominic person or haste or you know the the buff yeah. debuff stuff but there's not like a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of like combining or like working together integrated into the game you know depending on your dm you can always be like hey dm can i push this tree over and you know pin them down and that old you know do xyz yeah for, for and the problem is that like by not including any examples of that like they don't need to include the the mechanical aspects if they give enough examples and opportunities and and things in there so that it can spark the idea because i know a couple of dms who they will take everything by the book and it's like since it never says anything about you being able to push trees over push tree ever over. yeah ever in the book it you're not able to do that and it's like cool no mm -hmm. you're supposed to think outside the box people it's kind of part of the game it, it, yeah that is the whole thing that that 5e was very very much so supposed to be based on the the dm like dm it's your world do mm -hmm. a lot of crazy stuff and like here's some examples but a lot of people took it as like dm here are the rules yeah and you know that's why that's why stuff like siege creatures exist the yeah. whole double damage to objects and structures people don't deal with that stuff because dms don't like it when you go i'm gonna punch the door down and they're like no the lock dc is 25 so the door is invulnerable you have to try to unlock it 
by lockpicking. Because right. it is it, it is difficult to um God, how do I put this? When you're when you're a DM, you tell a story. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, the story that you want to tell hinges on moments like you can't get through the door because you don't have a skilled lock picker. So you need to go find a skilled lock picker that introduces you to NPC XYZ. So you form a coalition, yada, yada, happens, you get through the door. So when someone goes, I'm just going to punch the door down and you as DM go, oh crap, that's right. They can do that. Yeah. It, it really, it really throws off the whole, I have half of the session hinged based on, on the fact that yeah. you don't go through this door. Yep. Oh, you and guys have done that to me a, a whole lot before with creatively tough, coming up with solutions yeah. I never thought of, which stressed me out as a DM because I felt like I had to come up and I had to think of every solution, every possibility and plan for it because someone would try if you something. you somehow do get through the door, yeah. you don't have the other side finished because you were like, this isn't, you know, they're not getting through the door. Yeah, and then it's like you open it up. There is a blank room because the DM did not plan this. This door. Yeah, they didn't plan for you to to take your your horses and spook them so they kick the door <laughs> off the hinges. Like, yeah. And you know, a, a lot of the times, and and this is in my opinion, what separates a really good DM from an okay DM. An okay DM will kind of just be like, it doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Group gets, you know, just dis dis discouraged and they eventually leave. But a good DM on the spot will have the ability to be like, okay, you punch the door down or whatever. And in doing so, you make a lot of sound, a lot of ruckus. And now everyone in the surrounding region is looking at you and people are calling over guards. Like, yeah, yeah. there's a level of, I need to save my own ass without making it feel like the characters can't do what they want to do but it is so difficult it is so it's difficult, difficult to make to, it to not feel like it's it's punishing either like punishing right. your creativity because you're not it's just that if you guys go through that that door it's gonna make it impossible for me to continue we'll have to stop the session and i know you guys want to continue so we all got to work together here and agree that it's fine and go somewhere go another direction essentially yeah. with this it's also the smoke and beers aspect of like well there wasn't a magical barring mechanism on the other side but now there is and now i have to figure out but, why that is <laughs> yeah why yeah, this guy was whole... able to afford it, that kind of technology yeah and... yeah it is a whole what is thing he hiding? in those aspects <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> it helps sometimes it helps build the story you can't discount those mm -hmm. moments but for the most 100%. part yikes is all i gotta say yeah and and there are definitely instances where your players do something stupid or your players do something off the rails and it is not so imperative to the story to as to as derail the entire session but it gives you the capability of being like oh mm, okay improv time i can work with that or like it, it gets your own storytelling gears spinning because Let's face it, as as dungeon masters, we're not we're not making the world down to a T. We are setting up no. rules and parameters in which society is run. So when someone does something and it starts turning those wheels, it has very quickly uh, or a very quick cascading effect in the world of like how things would happen, how things would be, how and all of a sudden, you have a random person just kind of pop up in the building because they were here for X, Y, Z reason. Because you know, mm -hmm. A, B, C happened, which did E, F, G, which was caused by this character. And now, all of a sudden, you have a completely different subplot. Sometimes it improves in the story, of... and I, yeah, you can't, you can't say that it's not an, um, it's your story and, and all that because it's it's supposed to be an interactive building experience, but. But you also had something planned in mind that you know that the, the players would enjoy had they just gone along with what you had come up with. And um, all all roads lead to Rome. Yeah. You, you depend. You know. You don't have to take the same road. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we finished one. Uh, do you want to roll again? 
Or do you want to just pick one? Are we one? not going to do six? Six? I thought we were uh, doing, six thought we were doing the tiefling six. noble. Okay. Here she is. Yeah, good. It's going to be fun. You know, horns and all. Oh, horns. Yeah, that's rough. Don't worry. Horns I are... found a 3D model for this one that I... That I drew from. I can't be wrong because I got it off the 3D model. It is model. technically Second. right, even if it does look wrong ever. It's fine because it's technically right. And of course, I got you know it, crazy hair for this it, one. Yeah, it also comes down to the whole aspect of like doing art and stuff like that. Even though it's technically right, you have to. Sometimes you do have to make it not technically right because it doesn't look right in that angle or whatever. You're working you're working with line work like line art yeah so when you put a line somewhere you're making a statement visually that might not exist the same way in the original 3d rendering yeah so like it could be really difficult to be like here's the 3d render i'm going to trace the outline right i'm going to trace the outline of 3d render and it looks completely wrong and then you start putting in the specific like curve lines and the fold lines and all that sort of stuff and all every you know it comes together and now it looks right but even when you're drawing directly from a 3D model and you start putting those line details in, if you're not putting them in the right way to like it insinuate something, then it can still look completely wrong. Yeah, exactly. Archizel says that jawline though. <laughs> okay, hand. <laughs> She's a noble, as you can see here. We got a. Uh... Got a crown. She have any gold? She got any? Yeah, the gold feel great. Gotcha. She's got a crown. She's gonna have fancy clothes. Uh, slap some patterns on the little little capelet that she's got going. Uh, Can we put like a tattoo on her neck? I kind of want her to have a tattoo. Is that weird? Sure. You want to design a tattoo? You want to have? Uh, well, it's like pull it the chat to try and figure out what it should look like. It wouldn't be like. fully exposed though. Like it would be like that. Like. Yeah, it's just a peeking yeah, out of, of. Yeah. What about like a, you could do something stereotypical like a dag dagger handle. Or it's just like the. So like in the artwork, it would look like a piece of um. Uh, a piece of wood or wrapping or something like that, and then right above it, it's got like a little gem inlay. So like on first glance, when it's exposed to the public, it looks like a tattoo of like a gem or something like that. And then if for whatever reason her top slides off, or or she shows it um it's like it, it goes from oh yeah it's it's a cute gem to oh that's a knife <laughs> <laughs> i run my games online currently i have run them in person quite a few of them but that's a knife sorry i'm a answering the chat <laughs> that's, that's, no, that's okay yeah i know, yeah, I know. <laughs> you want a tattoo draw one she's not wrong <laughs> I am a, I, I am a font of creativity sometimes. Uh, For better so, or uh, worse. Yeah, V V has has basically had the uh, allowance to go. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll do that. And no, <laughs> <laughs> like you you have a lot of ideas. No to this one. <laughs> <laughs> do you realize how much work you're making for me right now? Yeah, exactly. Recently found a 3D modeler who went and modeled all of the monster manuals and free downloadable files, and that's insane. Yeah, that wow. is insane. Wow. Yeah. I will tell you right now, though. There, just like just like drawn art, there are crazy, crazy 3D artists who can burn through basic sculpts in like 20 minutes. Mhm. Mm Once and you have your your craft like cornered <laughs> so that sounds like you're it's, hunting but you know you have you have that skill wrong, cornered. Like... yeah, yeah. It, it also i feel it also deals with program knowledge like i like with yeah. my video editing and in the digital world you know your speed and capabilities can really fall into how well do you know your program because it's one thing to hit control z but it's a uh, it's another thing to do what you do with your fill tool, right? Where you have your auto select inverse and then shrink that tool. Mm -hmm. Like that was you learning your program. You hit a button and it works. 3D modelers are on a fucking crazy level because they do the same thing. But because you're working in a 3D space, you start dealing with like the capa 
Look, excuse me. You deal with the capabilities of setting curves and like details and how things end and start and stuff like that. And it's just bonkers. Like I've seen people model in, in Blender and stuff like that. And they are they are hitting hotkeys that don't, that just straight up don't change the user interface, but change the way that the model is being created. And it just blows my mind. Yeah, and for anybody who doesn't do a craft like that to have that perspective, that's the reason why you pay someone so much. Even if they're doing it really quickly, it's because of the years mm -hmm. it took to get to that point at which they can do it that quickly. Because they know they've they've spent the hours, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to learn their programs. Mm -hmm. What would take you hours to sit down and try to figure out how to turn a model they can do in two seconds because they know it and you're that's why you're paying these people that's yeah, why i feel like speed. yeah that's that's what i feel like a lot of people don't understand when they get these things and they're like well why don't you just sit there and draw it right now and do this you'll be done in no time you could probably uh, yeah, do I'll like 12 a day or an hour or something like that yeah you, you probably like... you could probably do like what this took you so so little time like why am i paying so much money and you're like mm hmm <laughs> hate customers like you uh yeah yeah it comes down to the whole aspect of like in this in this instance this is a problem but if you went to a mechanic if you brought your car into a shop the mechanic took 20 minutes to fix the problem you wouldn't look at them and go well i shouldn't pay you as much money because it only took 20 minutes you'd be like thanks for getting it done so fast i can't wait to leave here's my money and then leave yeah and yet there are some people who are like well that took you no time at all why am i paying so much money there's always going to be a, a Karen, but yeah, yeah, it is the learning. It is, it is, it is the same thing as uh, getting tools. Okay, so here's a good example. When you want something machine, right? If you want something built and processed in in a in a factory on a lathe or on a CNC or whatever they have a set price that set price involves having to pay off the tools that they bought mm -hmm. in order to provide you that service exactly. not only that but also the, the 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 capabilities of the person running the the cad design and deals with plunger depth and all this sort of stuff but it ultimately comes down to the fact that you have to pay off the tools that they bought now artists have access to free tools you're not paying off I say in working have, in well, Photoshop. <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah, have access to free tools and have access to the capabilities of drawing on, you know, cheaper or less expensive tablets and stuff like that. But you're not really paying for the material cost of the capabilities of drawing. You're paying for the college tuition and the years of understanding the program that they're working in and all of the, the learned capabilities. You're paying the backlog on what they had to pay to gain access to the information yeah the barrier in this case is not the tools in which you could make something the barrier is the the knowledge of using that tool because let's face it there are tools out there that any idiot could use that are really expensive like a car this is, yeah most anyone can drive a car you can drive a civic or you can drive a ferrari and if you're going on the autobahn and time matters the more expensive tool is going to get it done faster but they both are the same capabilities. <laughs> Heck yeah, student loans. Uh, uh, <laughs> fun times. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it is it is unfortunate that, you know, people people look at art and be like, well, that took you no time at all. I should have paid that much money for it. And it's like, no, because if this was a time sensitive issue, you would be really happy that you were able to get it this quickly. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then it blows my mind when people are like, I commissioned this like two months ago and got one update. I'm so mad that they haven't finished it yet. It's like, okay, pick one. <laughs> you can only be mad yeah, about one Yeah, it's that triangle, cheap, one. fast, and good. And you're only yeah, able to exactly. get two of the things at the same time. There is no, there is no magic where everything is the same. As everything is mm. uh, applied. From yeah, that. You end up with the web, what is it, the webtoon or the webcomic thing where like, they have all of their expressions as brushes yeah exactly and it's like yeah you can get a lot of stuff out and <laughs> it, it, it also in the art at least it depends on the medium too right because if you're working 
if you are working traditionally, it is, it, it is going to require different tools. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think people... I think people don't understand how how difficult art is because so many people do it. Art is one yeah. of those things where they talk about if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, and you walk around like, well, there's a whole crap ton of artists, so how hard can it be? <laughs> it's it, you stop. You are welcome to instance, try, sir. <laughs> like... Yeah, and that in that instance, the reason why there's so many people doing it is because it's a it's a human passion. It is not a uh, a, a learned tool or a skill set. Art has been a passion for humans since we figured out how to conceptualize a spear. Yeah. When you make a spear, you are working with art. You need to understand 3D space. You need to understand how to tool it. You need to understand how to carve it. You need to understand what wood to use or what stone tips to use. Like, like we have been working on creative things since we had the capabilities of inventing things. Naturally, that's going to stay with us. So naturally, we're going to have plenty of artists. But that doesn't make it any easier. You don't look at a blacksmith and say, oh, your job's easy because all you're doing is hitting metal. Like, one, one of those no. interesting things, <laughs> and this does bring it actually back to to D and D, but um, I found a tool that would tell you how many blacksmiths and um, butchers, etc., would be in a, a town or a city when you've put in all the parameters of the size and the amount of people. And most of the time, it was like, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. A good, fair-sized city would have something like fifty blacksmiths. Are you going to tell me that? Because there are fifty of them, their their worth is less. No, it's just because of yeah. the demand that is there for the skills and and the amount of, like, yeah, it was, it's wild. You can deep dive on that stuff when I when I was making like my cities, <laughs> on figuring yeah, out and- everything about that stuff. And the crazy thing about that is like it's fifty of them, and it's like okay, that's fifty proficient blacksmiths. Yeah. It doesn't take into account. The people who are learning, the people who are opening their own shop, or yeah. the people who are a master smith who will not work for the public, yeah, because they are they specifically not get paid. you know commissioned by nobles or something like they yeah yeah they are word of mouth. They have gotten so good that they don't have a shop or anything. People come to them and ask them if they can do things because you're well known. You don't yeah. need to advertise that you're a blacksmith or anything like oh, that. Man. Oh yeah, it's goals, it's, it's, goals, it's, man. If if you, if you're so well known that you don't have to do your own social media, I say, posting for the third time about my social media about my stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and the other the other thing is is these people who can do those art so fast. Uh, the the passion that they have like if we put everyone on a level playing field who all learn at the same rate who have the capabilities of executing things at the same time when it comes down to that art very much like anything else to get better at it you have to do it a lot Mm -hmm. and you're you know you're paying for the fact that they continued to a point that you found their art acceptable. Yeah. Like, some artists are really, really good. And they're really, really good because they've put literally 10,000 plus hours into doing art. And you're ba- you're paying the backlog of how many thousands of hours they've been drawing. Yeah. And then there are there are other artists, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to poo-poo anyone, but there are other artists who are either up and coming or just don't have the technique or capabilities that professionals do. And people are going to be like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to buy art from them because it's not up to my standards or whatever it may be. And it's going to be like, okay, well then you're going to pay more for it because the people who are up to your standards have a lot more time invested into learning and getting up to where you think is comfortable which is the whole right. expectations and that's stuff not like that yeah that's not their down. customer base anyway that's not the people that they want to be working for you don't want to be working for someone who is settling for your artwork you want someone who is excited like back when um i was like still on oikakis and like things that were uh you draw 
as man, there's no, not artist spaces like this anymore, but the the whole message board is just people drawing on the the, the Japanese based um, art program, web based art program, and it would pop up and hey, thank you for following, um, and it would pop up uh, and push like other <laughs> artwork off of the like mm-hmm. gradually, but you would have like a, a comment section on each one, and people would give feedback and the the level of artwork that was being produced was the Meg. varied <laughs> it varied hang on yeah hang on. meg meg literally just came out of hiding to post oh my god okeki central was my jam in high school yeah literally her first message ever in chat was to come out of hiding and being like it's part of that i remember that exactly so so you've got people who are uh you newcomers drawing with, with well, a mouse yeah. with, uh, that's what i did i drew with a mouse and i gave myself wrist problems because i didn't have a, a tablet and mm-hmm. alongside people who clearly have training and uh, proper anatomy and things like that and the community was so helpful and rich and and wanting to help everybody grow and but you would also have oh man you would also have people who obviously you would never be able to afford the commissions of those people who are super good. But you have people who are basically your peer group who you would commission and uh, you're still just as excited to get this, I mean, when you look back at it now, kind of crappy artwork, but you were like super excited because that is your character that someone has drawn. Like yeah. there is nothing yeah, like there's... that excitement that of getting that artwork and this like who cares if it's not like to some ridiculous standard of yeah it's not going to go in a museum it's going to go on my locker like that's what that's what those things Mm -hmm. were for back then i like yeah yeah Yeah, i think i think the problem is and i'm (laughs) frankly i'm not 30 yet i'm getting there i'm not 30 yet and i'm gonna sound like I'm, i'm gonna sound like an old geezer it's literally the world that we're living in right now the reason being is that we have commodified nowadays... art as a yes. as content instead of art. <laughs> That's what I yes. think is the, the biggest problem. Yes. And artists are going after each other now. Because well, Of course, cuz that's the that's the culture that has been bred from uh social media that only rewards those who make content and constant yeah, content, and content that yeah. is uh yeah exactly i absolutely There's, hate hate that stuff yeah it, it and it's really difficult because there i wish i could wish i could tell everyone this there is nothing wrong with being bad at something when you're really? learning it really really i look at you okay. i look all right. at all of the things okay that you've... okay mm-hmm. i hold myself to a bad standard you do go on but, but you need to be able to accept that you're not good at something because you're learning. Yes. If you can't accept that your creation, I don't even want to say art. If you can't accept that your creation isn't right or isn't good or isn't great, if you can't accept that, you're going to have a lot of problems growing because you're not going to be able to take criticisms. When when I when I started playing guitar, I started doing basically anything that I do. I always looked for ways to better what i did i always looked for different ways to hold it i looked for different string gauges i looked for different things to do it because i understood i wasn't that good and i wanted to be good so it drove me to go into regions and talk to people to be better Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with being bad at something when you're learning it there is something wrong with not admitting to yourself what your art level is now on top of that comes a different problem is who you're comparing yourself to. Yes. You will, if if you're comparing yourself to someone who is professional, got professional training, went to college for years under other professionals and did all of this stuff not, to get where they yeah, are. Yeah, they are not at your level. This is why a lot of, um, I'm in the comic scene, obviously. I'm in the D&D scene as well, but because of the gestures at this. But like in the comic scene, that's what is being underlined uh, repeatedly where people are saying, find your peers, befriend your peers. Do not find those people who are already established and published. They are not your peers. They're not the people who are going to be moving up at the same level as you, at the same speed as you. 
uh, getting their books. They're there. Pub- they're already there, and they'll probably. Yep. They they've already become established. They probably have won't be there anymore once you get up to that point. They'll probably move yeah. moved on or you know had life stuff like come up. Yeah. And yeah. So 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 it is not worth your time to try and reach to this that standard. Reach out to your community on on the same playing field that you're on. Yep. And it's not to say it, it, that you can't like look up to people. Yeah. That is completely look up and look fine. And keep going. Yeah. Just don't stop walking. Yeah. And when people say, you know, maybe do this, maybe do that, don't get don't don't get up in arms about it. And you know, if they're being nice, if they're being assholes, it's a different story. But if they're being nice, don't get up in arms about it. Like, yeah, if they're being genuine hey. to try and help you. <laughs> yeah. Take help. There's nothing wrong with taking help. It's a cheat. <laughs> Literally, as getting help for something is 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 kind of like cheating. Because it's a cheat code. Maybe they already <laughs> invented the wheel. Yeah, yeah. you don't maybe want they to already reinvent these it. Things. Yeah. There's no point in trying to relearn it. There's no there's no point in trying to Unless it's for fundamental understanding, there's something to be said about understanding fundamentals to build your own stuff. But if somebody is telling you something and they're giving you the reasons why, it's because they spent hours, if not days, weeks, or years coming to this conclusion and yes. they're imparting their knowledge for free. Yes. It, it is like, it is like, you know, getting a free teaching lesson from somebody when they just say, maybe try this. You never would have thought it. You tried it, and now whatever you're doing, art or not, whatever you're doing is better. It 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 it's, it accelerates you, and that is why looking you know looking forward to grounds in which you feel like you can get to is so important because you can so heavily demoralize yourself when you're looking at things that you're not as good as, but you're yes. not looking at the things that are your next step. Right? Exactly. You're looking at your you're looking at your goal. You're not looking at your path. If you look at your path and you look at the next step, the next thing you want to do, it's, an, it's something in front of you that's achievable. And then you do the next thing. You do the next thing. The problem that I find a lot of the times is that people don't they don't really have their their path or their goals figured out. They just kind of like I want to be this good. It's like okay, how do you how, do that? Good? How, like, I don't know. I just how wanna... do you plan on doing that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just want to be this good. It's like okay, well, practice perspective. I don't want to do that. Do you think you the mean? person gestures at like, you know, the the pro that they are admiring? Do you For think course, that they yeah. do you think that they enjoyed, you know, over and over and over again studying all the of boxes. these things and doing, mm. and repeatedly doing the perspective exercises? No. Yeah. But you know what they learn? They, they learn shortcuts that they still remember to this day, like I do from college, about the the perspective cheats that my teacher taught and i begrudgingly like yeah. remember thank god from back then because because they, they help you and that's where yeah. the cheat codes come in is that is that they've learned and they've done those things and that's why when you go to learn something go find people that already know what they're doing that you can get along with and learn from them and ask them for help and, and like kind of see what they're doing because they've already done the learning they've already figured out the path you're trying to walk and they're making it clear where your feet need to go on the path. Yeah. Because so don't I, spite them by stop stomping off the path and being like, no, I'm going to do it my way. And then you're just going to go right back on the path. Yeah. You can't cheat perspective. It is a finite thing. It has rules. <laughs> you can cheat perspective, okay, but you need to yes, know perspective to cheat it is the, cheat is it. the yeah, problem. Exactly. But yes, your point still stands. Yeah, I had the same thing uh, when it, when I did guitar. Like, I I had things that are like, man, I don't know why they're doing it like this. They should just do it like this. And then like a month later, I'd be like, oh, oh, that is why. Yes, that's why they did it. And it is so amazing because, and when you have somebody who's really good at what they do tell you something, and it doesn't make sense. It is wild when it finally makes sense because they told you it because of like three different other reasons they didn't tell you. Mm-hmm. And you because needed to figure what... out what those other reasons were. Yeah, because those ones were the ones that, that made sense to them. But they don't know what makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I could tell you that, uh, you know, doing all these curls with the hair and the easiest way to, to imagine the way that, I, 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 you know, strands and chunks of hair work, but it doesn't make sense to you until you, I don't know, uh, look at it. You have to do it or see it. Yeah, until you start to oh do it God. yourself and the evolution it out. too. Yeah. The 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 brain the eye brain interface is such an interesting thing because because you're working specifically in art in two D because you're working in two D nothing will make sense until you put the one line. Yeah, and sometimes it really takes the one line for everything to click into place because your that line tricked your brain into thinking about perspective, like. Mm -hmm. It's wild to think about how, you know, oh, the fold of this muscle is going to block things behind it. Oh, that's why that looks weird because mine was straight and I didn't take into, I didn't take into account the fact that there's a forearm muscle that goes out in that direction that is now blocking everything else. One line, everything now makes sense. Yep, exactly. It's this crazy. is why I don't draw. This is why I don't do art. I, I am music. I need rules. I need buttons and strings that have a fundamental, like, I, Whereas I love art. I love that there's no wrong. Uh, and, and I appreciate, like, I, I appreciate artists because, and that is, that is another thing, man, I wish people would get through their heads. Do the things you think are easy. Seriously. And realize I wish how people would do easy, the things. quote unquote, they are. Yes. Yeah. If it's that easy, take 10 seconds and do it. And then figure out why it's so hard. Because I, I have a lot of respect for a lot more people. Because the things I thought were easy, I went and tried. And I've done that so many times at this point in my life. I've done art. I've done it. Like, I've, I have executed and drawn art to a degree that I was somewhat happy with. And I went, I'm good. I now have an understanding of how this stuff works. I'm out. But <laughs> good for you guys because you enjoy it. I understand it now and have more respect for those who do it. This ain't for me. And yeah, I which drawing. I respect. And it's the same thing. Welding, carpentry, uh, any blue collar job, um, programming. Obviously that's my job. So this is a whole different thing. But programming, um, like, like manufacturing designs for computers or, or architectural levels or low-level programming or, like, there's all of these everyday stuff that we just kind of have access to. But if you take any sort of deep dive into it, you begin to realize just how technologically difficult or mechanically difficult basically everything we have is. Because mm -hmm. everything we have comes from a point that required immense amount of intelligence and technology to develop like you're like oh well, that can't be true like okay here's a great example silverware you use it every day mm -hmm. how do you think that silverware got to where you are it's got to be from a package the package has to be designed structurally designed to not crumple not fold and not break to keep the silverware protected it needs to have a logo on it so now a human being needs to design and implement a logo it needs to have the cardboard, so you need to actually manufacture the cardboard. So there's an entire facility for just the cardboard. It needs to go through logistics and shipping, so there needs an entire industry to ship it. It needs to both get the metal, so now you need miners, my miners, um, to get the metal and ship it to a facility in which it can be broken down and melted. So now you need to know the specific melting point of it. You need to be able to get the impurities out. You need to be able to cast it safely. Then <laughs> you need to be able to push it out have the staff to do that, get it packaged, and then get in logistics. Silverware. Yeah. The most basic thing we use to eat has six or seven different complete billion dollar industries in order to support it. The technology to just put silverware in front of you by itself is still insane. And yeah. all of those jobs, when, when somebody finally looks at it, sits down and looks at things and where it comes from, it kind of just, it, it, uh, I guess the best way to put it is it, it makes you understand that the everyday things that we have accessible to us are all genuinely human made. Like, yeah, it was made by a machine, but the humans made the machines. People made everything around you. A person somewhere has worked on something to make the thing around you. 
And sometimes that still just blows my mind to think about it. That yeah. everything in this house that I own was made by a human being at like some level. Yeah, designed or or physically made or uh, fetched by like plucked, picked, moved. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is there is a human somewhere in everything in my house that made it possible, and it's still just. It, it doesn't put me into an existential crisis, but it really makes you start thinking about things on, on different <laughs> levels of like, of of like potential jobs even, and, and I think that is something that. Um, me as a child, I never really got a chance to understand is that. You want to look for a job. Look for something you're using, and, figure out what job made that. Some people, it's like I look at art. I want to do that. Okay, draw art. Yep. Some people look at like me. <laughs> metal and you go, oh, man, how did they get the metal to be like that? And then you start looking into like metal design and casting and like head stuff. And there's, there's, there's potential to understand how many jobs are out there just in the stuff that you have sitting around you. But we, I feel as people have come to be so complacent with the fact that I can go on Amazon, order an item and have access to it, that you start to forget how many people made the thing that you're doing because yeah. it it comes from a box right it is it is apparated from a box that you bought from you're detached a, from a, the process for sure yeah yeah we, we, exactly and, i mean that some of that's for our own sanity because if we sat here every day and appreciated every single thing it would be overwhelming item, it would be extremely <laughs> overwhelming but uh but it, is to that, it is good to respect it is good to help you know establish that respect for all of that the detachment things. is the problem with people in art though and that's kind of where i'm yes. circling back to is yeah. the fact that people because... are so detached because it's so readily available nowadays they don't actually understand that how much that specific piece of art took. yeah exactly and this the stuff that is like commission they, those are luxuries because unlike the logo design for the uh, the spoons and such, it's not going to be on a shelf and does, like shown by to thousands of people to judge in order to sell it. This is a personal mm -hmm. commissioned piece for you, for your specific pur purpose. This is a luxury item, therefore it can have luxury prices. This is not a requirement mm -hmm. for you to live, unlike a spoon. Not even that you need a spoon because even you can the, use even your the hands. Case, yeah, like, but, I'll just, you don't know. but most people see a spoon or at least cutlery of some sort to, to being a level of a necessity. Pretty basic living, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like, in that respect, in that regard, we got to have more, uh, you know, respect for ourselves as, as artists um, to price ourselves appropriately. Because the whole thing where we just churn out artwork at a breakneck speed, wreck our bodies, and, you know, just to make rent for one month or whatever, is not doing any the next person any favors. Because it's just going to be passed down to the next person who everyone else expects to be mm -hmm. priced the same way. And if we can all just raise our, ourselves, all, all of us up, to have... Uh, more people have the respect that we are our luxury providers, but also art is in everything. Like you said, with the packaging and the design of the actual mm -hmm. spoons and stuff. Because yeah, people, all, people, people for, don't have that balance. Is art. Yeah, everything. Yeah, if, if people were like back in the beginning of the pandemic, were were snippy about how like what essential services were and it's like art is not an essential service and and these things and it's like cool i would love uh for you to not um be able to access any kind of uh film tv uh any kind mm -hmm. of any kind of d product design any packaging design mm -hmm. etc just just like list goes on and on and on you can't that you, you interact with every day that you could couldn't you everything it's in everything we as human beings yeah. have made art in everything art the thing is, is art on a fundamental level is everything because yeah we we are really the only species on the planet that can understand art and in the way that art is based off of creativity creativity is the fatherhood of invention 
literally if you can't be creative you can't make things no, so when we we're talking about things but you're not making anything you, can, new. you can't well you can't you can't produce anything either because how do you produce items you produce items by making the tools in which I, like is used to produce them you can't make sticks you, you know those, could you know those, like, you, if you're a person sticks, who's like, like lightsaber things Yes, I'm. I'm Creativity. saying you just made a fucking. Like, you hand you hand that person a, a Lego set. They can follow the instructions and they can have a product that they made at the end, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they made it in their brain, like created it. They made it. They made a sandwich because they know A B C D. There we go. Fold it, mm -hmm. put it in half. But they don't. They didn't create a new type of sandwich like. That's that's yeah. the part that I mean. And, and it's also to the level of like if you're working with Legos, if you, if it was that person's like you know, uh, oh we don't you know, obviously, hyperbole we don't need art, so you know you can't use you can't use anything that's art. Well, I'm sorry to tell you if you can't use anything that's art or based off of art or has anything that sur is surrounded or or any involvement in the art process, you can't use anything. Yeah, exactly. Literally, because sorry, that artisanal art sandwich create... needs to be confiscated, sir. <laughs> that... Yeah, because you <laughs> want to know how you got that? You got that bread by a package, which a logo, so automatically disqualified. But you also got it by machinery and tractors to take the grain. Right there in that tractor alone is decades and millions of man hours to figure out how to make internal combustion engines work. Like, you can't touch anything without a, some level of intricacies in creativity and art to produce it. It doesn't matter what. Outside of you putting something, even, all right, you want to, I'm going to fucking blow your mind. You oh put gosh. a seed in the ground. You put a seed in the ground to grow a vegetable and saying, I'm not touching anything art. I'm going to plant this seed. That's too bad because you got that seed from a fucking package. I had a logo well, on it. What if they it. harvested it themselves? They took it out of the apple right. that they fair if they went off to someone else but i mean even to that degree you still have Told. the person who made the field the person who owns the property who has the machinery to plant the trees like mm -hmm. everything you touch to some degree nowadays has art or creativity in some way associated with it there is literally nothing outside of going into the middle of nowhere where human beings has not been yet and then doing it yourself because you go off to someone's property and be like, I'm going to pick my own apple. I'm going to do my trees. Picks an apple. Well, congratulations. That apple was planted by somebody else. That apple tree was planted by somebody else using technology and art from somebody else. Can't use it. Also, the you, knowledge you just, that they yeah, have to farm and, and all of that. We're yeah. all creatively uh, discovered by somebody and the best way to yeah. put things into the ground because this is the most ideal time of of month and even though it's yeah. science it's still someone's creativity i feel like science is one of those things that people overlook as one of the most creative um science aspects. is incredibly creative exactly yeah. and a lot of people science don't is, think about that but they but it is science is humans science is humans applying the, a creative knowledge so like you know people will be like oh science isn't you know science isn't art science is science well, okay, well, let me explain something. Math is math. Math uh, is math. Okay. But science is science is applied art. Like you you need to be creative enough to to create instances in theories. With uh, literally uh, the, what was it? What was it? The um hy hy oh, what is it? What is it called? It's the hy the hypothesis is the the uh, scientific process or something like that one of the scientific processes is literally you need to form a hypothesis you need to form some sort of guess of what yeah, is going so to happen you have to be creative <laughs> you have to be creative you yeah. have to use your previous knowledge and you need to come up with something new that is not anything different than someone looking at a blank canvas and going I'm going to make mm, I'm going to make a house Yeah. and then applying that knowledge and making the house when you're a scientist, you're going to go, I need to make X, Y, Z. Okay. You are now an artist trying to produce X, Y, Z. And in the science that is your art, you are now trying to figure out how to apply things together to create that. 
you you are still manhandling things and putting them together to form that thing and without you the human being that thing would never happen without you the human being that thought process would never happen <laughs> we went on such a tangent i'm sorry i gotta point out I, this, yeah. this went places i <laughs> i i it is the problem the problem that i see with nowadays is that drawn art digital media in this manner it is now so accessible that everyone is competing that is the problem because when before the internet was a big thing you you know you would you would not really have a whole lot of intricacies and things getting spread over the internet and and uh and, and people wouldn't be like yeah i'm gonna go hire someone out of like tokyo to do my logo in california or something like that you'd work in the local industry you go find local artists you bring them in you give yeah, them a exactly. sentence, you sit them down you say draw it for me that is not a thing anymore it's interesting because i feel like a lot of these classic um artists like ones that are on stamps to celebrate the the regional culture um which was something we've had here um they are they famous because of the time period that they came up with because their art isn't anything spectacular but we have people today who could be thousands of versions of that person but the fact that they're drowned out by the sheer the amount of are, people who are yeah. also doing these things means that we won't celebrate them in the same way. They won't ever get that kind of celebration because they're even if they are celebrated as a local artist, they're not going to have the same reception as as being the town artist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that the the local celebrity, the local who can do the thing it's... that is. To bring it back, like to D and D, you you want to feel special. Local D and Ds, yeah. You you want to be the hero. That's what the party is for. It's as if, and social media now is as if the DM has put in, you know, all of everyone, all of his cool <laughs> DM 20s. NPCs yeah. that he's made for campaigns that never happened, and you're like, cool. Uh, don't, I don't, I don't feel like we made an impact here, because in. <laughs> the same thing is i feel the same thing is going to happen so there's a big difference art art is thriving because of the now stick with me here art is thriving is because of the ability to transfer transfer the asset across an infinite space quickly and efficiently okay when blue collar jobs are going to get robotified Okay, let's let's imagine, um, let's imagine for a moment that mm -hmm. we're far enough in the future that we have these suits and these VR headsets, and we can control a robot to do a job. Once we get that, we are now going to run into issues of well, this master carpenter or this uh, X Y Z person who is a welder or whatever can now be in Russia, Tokyo, uh, Germany can be in you know america mexico they can be anywhere in the world so now the competition for carpentry has gone worldwide it is the same thing with art because the medium is now has the capabilities of allowing that labor or allowing that process and results to go across an indefinite amount of space mm -hmm. you now have worldwide competition you cannot compete with seven billion other people who have access to going anywhere in the world mm -hmm. then you're going to have people who are going to be like well the job sector is going to get smaller the demand for the jobs are, is going to get less and, and and unfortunately with art to a degree when you make something from art it doesn't degrade it doesn't break down it doesn't die the only thing it can do is go out of style or not be supported by programs anymore. When you make something, it is made forever. Uh -huh. It is not the same thing as when you make a car or you make a house or you make a you know anything else. Those things will break down. Those Tangible product, repair, yes. Yeah. yeah, those things will eventually disappear. When you work in a digital space and you create digital assets, they're there forever. So when we started becoming very media based very very media centric very gamey uh, movies uh, anime all this sort of stuff there was a massive 
first of like we need people who can do this sort of stuff because we need to be these products but the second those products can be recycled in any way the demand for the people who made it immediately drops because companies are profit first they're not going to pay artists for things they can reuse the funny thing about that too is that as soon as someone is called out for being having recycled something like disney did with a lot of references that they had and then people put these compilations together to laugh at you know disney artists having a shoestring budget and having to animate this entire film in a crunch and having oh no these background characters did the same dance because it's the footage that they had that was the same dance is what they referenced and Mm -hmm. they're being mocked for it it's like what did you expect when everything wasn't you know respected essentially Mm -hmm. what what are you gonna get when yeah the i saw a huge complaint recently where it was about um like preschool and and such uh, shows these days it's like oh it used to be great and it's like a oh is it the bean a well things thing? like that yeah and it's like a yeah. those shows still exist somewhere you could show your kid if you really were going to be that like that and b you're looking at oh, it through dies. you're looking at it through uh um childhood sunglasses of like rose colored glasses oh yeah big you're, time you really can't objectively say that these things are are better than these things that are being made today and also things yeah, that are made like... today that are like animated because i have a lot of friends in the animation industry uh can contest to the fact that they're doing their best with what they can do and what with the resources that they have time the time the money it comes Hardware, back to that triangle software. cheap fast good man you're not gonna. Yep. <laughs> you're gonna get the best you can out of out of everything, and there will be reuses, and there will be ch- there will be uh, corners cut, and and that. Because companies companies want money, so what are they gonna do? Mm-hmm. The first thing they're gonna do is, weirdly enough, they're gonna recy- <laughs> reduce, recycle, reuse. Oh god! But yeah. not for the right reasons. They're no. gonna reduce not for our environment. the number of background characters. They're gonna reduce the number of of background buildings or geometry or what have you. Then they're going to reuse assets in any location that they can. Same building, same sidewalk, same car. And uh, and if they can't do that, they're going to recycle what they do have in the terms of they're going to recycle animation keyframes or they're going to recycle the framework for something for the art. Yeah. You're not going to make new things with that. The problem is, is that at one point in time, those cars actually had to be made. Those buildings actually had to be made. Those keyframes actually had to be made. But now that they're made, they're resources. They're in a library. Yeah. So we're going to drop off four people. We're going to drop off four artists. Just take the one artist. Hey, you, use all this stuff that we already have. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's a reason why people don't like going into the industry. is because there's no cre- there is no creativity in the industry. The people who get to be creative are the executives. And they're not being creative because they want money. Because they're not the creative people anyway. They don't no. have the creative bones in their body. Womp womp. As... So there's a lot of freelance artists that are fighting against each other, unfortunately. Oh, it is, yeah, it is rough. And and, and, and and it makes me sad just because I know, you know, before I, before I met you, I had respect for artists, but I didn't, I didn't get to understand the other side, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's a product of the internet that we don't, we don't understand the other side of things because instant gratification, when you have the entire world at your hands, there is going to be someone somewhere working on a four year project and they're going to give it to you. And then you're going to play it. You're going to get bored, but you're going to move on to someone else's four year project Yeah. with no time to you at all in between, but to the people behind it, it's four years of work. And now, because this user has the accessibility of going from four-year project to four-year project to four-year project to four-year project, yeah. they don't understand the value of how long it took to make that thing because so many people are making it. Yeah. We are, we're going to get to a point where there's going to be like, there's some, some, something's going to, something's going to break. Mm-hmm. 
something's gonna break either either the viewers or the people ingesting the material are just gonna get sick of the quality or human beings in general are just gonna say no to making any more of it yeah i hope that people can i hope it comes out in a positive way and people can see the respect needed and the give yeah. the respect where it's it should be given but looking at the world as it is i don't think that's gonna happen but and and anyway. to a degree you know there are some people who are maliciously ignorant without a doubt but yeah. there are some people who just genuinely don't know and no one's bothering to explain it to them mm -hmm. like like when you brought up people nowadays who are using chromebooks or the younger generation don't know what a folder structure is because they're used to opening apps and interacting with apps and doing everything through that they they don't have people telling them what's going on and what people are doing to make the things that they're using there are no explanations there you know back back in my day but back in the day specifically with blue collar stuff people would just constantly tell you about how much effort went into making xyz because they were proud of it and the other person didn't have a medium which they can constantly ingest the thing so they had time to explain you know how this was made and how this you know uh was worked and all how the effort that made. i put into it made yeah it's a good show it's a good show uh but nowadays it's just it's it's TikTok. it's literally under one minute videos that people you know there are budgets there are literal budgets for these videos that are under one minute that can supersede entire people's pay, like pay months. But you watch it for 45 seconds and then it ends. Yeah. And then you move on. It's like. Yeah, it's not great culture. Oh my God. It's not a great time. I think this is going to be one of those times that people look back and kind of wince at humanity kind of thing. Yeah, it's But it's we're wild. living like, it. And we're just hanging on essentially that and that's that's why i don't that's why we play D D so that we can make our worlds uh, <laughs> as as fun and as uh you know idyllic as we would want them to be so that's why that's why vanessa is making something to sell because please pay me money i want to live <laughs> I want to, I want to I want to live and continue Honestly, making I just, things. I just want to enter I the way that artists work and it, this was a lot more evident when we had commissions. What is it? Our, I want to um, pay my other friend for art. We I just want, keep exchanging we're, the same we're $100. We're exchanging the ha same $100 bill <laughs> yeah. around in a circle. That's kind of what it's I want to go from here. It's my time. It's my turn for with, for the for that money. Um and then I will just spend it on dice, next. like handmade dice that someone made or or whatever and that's completely fine with me because that's <laughs> that is why i'm doing this i'm supporting the i'm supporting other dms because i know how much uh you know goes into these things they want to just grab mm -hmm. this and be able to throw things in it, it could just help inspire this this character herself uh someone could pick up this pack and go i just got a whole bunch of ideas for my campaign just yep. from looking at her because I know exactly where in my world she'll fit in and given that she's wearing expensive jewelry she's probably a noble or a, um, a royal and oh man so many ideas um, and I also want to make sure that people are not grabbing the, the precious characters that someone has worked on uh, and pour their heart into like Cat if someone grabbed uh, my artwork of my my Aladrin Barbarian and try to play her in their own game and I found out it would just break my heart. So I'm like, here, here, I throw a whole bunch of other characters. <laughs> Distraction. The, the cat uh, keyboard. Yeah. I a second keyboard for my cat. Or like, yeah. I saw a second laptop for my cat to lay on. Yeah. Uh, I I also, it, it is, it's funny because and this is going to sound really kind of weird. If I were to ever commission someone, I would actually prefer to be their friends first. No, that's not weird. Just straight up. Because I can't... I can't value a commission. Like, I'm, I, as much as I, I, I respect art, obviously, as we found out, I don't value art that way. 
I can't. I don't because it's a luxury item. It doesn't have a material use, and I'm a very pragmatic person. It is extremely difficult for me to value art if it if it doesn't have a specific use case for me. So if I was to commission someone for the whole sole, whole, you know, sole purpose of having something, it has to be from someone I know. It has to be from a person or friend that I know because I'm going to get more value out of giving my friend money than I am honestly getting out of having the artwork. So I can't commission people that I'm really, that I'm not really friends with. It just doesn't feel right because I don't know you through a hole in the wall. Me giving you money, yeah, I understand it's helping you and it's it's helping you, you know, stay alive and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just not, it doesn't hit right. You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel <laughs> the same. So, but it's really difficult because people who do commissions, they're not looking for friends. They're looking for money. And I'm just sitting here like, I will give you money, but you need to be my friend first. Wait, this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it definitely sounds bad, but it does. It makes it sense. Bad. It makes sense when you explain it. This is like I I I would like to hear your story and I would like to hear how you got here and all of the work you have to put in everything. I would like to sit next to you. Understand I can't say anything because Vanessa has <laughs> obviously expressed difficulty when I make changes, but sit next to you and watch you do it because I am going to get so much more out of this piece of art if I watch you draw the art because I, I see every line that gets made. I see the construction of the thing. It's not just here you go, finished product. It's like, no, I want it. My, the value comes out of all the work that went into it. If I don't get to see that work, it doesn't have as much value to me. But if I can look at a piece of art and go, I knew when they drew that. I knew when they changed that. I knew when they did this. It's like I was there for the creation and story of it. But it's just not in this age feasible. You know, mm -hmm. social anxieties or uh or just time constraints or or whatever there you know it's just not feasible and so that removes the value of art for me because art is in my op opinion is a very human thing it is very human created and human associative thing so if you remove the human from it i just i don't care i just don't care which it, it, it unless it has a specific use for me i don't care <laughs> yeah which is completely different from me for sure i will I will commission somebody that I don't know from the hole in the wall because their yeah. artwork is amazing. Uh, I know that it's really exciting for me to see a character I have designed drawn in someone else's style um, because that it's it's one of those things where when I'm, I'm the only artist in a D&D &D group and I'm the only one creating what these characters look like, it's really exciting to finally get someone else to draw them and for me because to finally get the ex yeah and, it, and i'm sure that the baseline excitement is still the same for you guys because you don't have the same value as i would of mm, finally made i didn't have to go and spend hours making this thing someone else did and it in my opinion looks way better than what i would have come up with because yeah, it's also yeah it's it's also the whole uh an artist can never truly appreciate their own work because they will know everything that is wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one other I, thing I, that I want to I want to emphasize. Yeah. We know, we know something looks bad or wrong, but you know what? There's a certain point at which you put <laughs> this one, down. This one's for me. This one's for me, Chad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a, <laughs> there's a certain point at which you put down the artwork because you need to move on to the next one. You can't sit there on. And, and some that people is do. Society. That is society right there. That is, I have to move on to the next one. Why? Because I'm on a time constraint. Why? It's not because a time constraint, people. too. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you just got to okay, move yeah, on. Sometimes you just got to, yeah. you won't grow as an artist or a person. If you're sitting there for 10 years working on that one same painting, your canvas is now thick inches, like three inches thick from the paint that you've put on it from all the revisions. And now, finally, your masterpiece, it is finished. Now what? Because you have not grown as a person to have made several pieces. You have only been working on it your is... crescendo for the entirety of a decade. I will say, I will say there is value in that if the things you have learned and applied are still with you. 
I think there absolutely is value in that. I'm just saying that that in most cases you're going to get more out of it if you're continuing to to grow rather than being stagnant. Yes. Because if you are working on the same piece, you are stagnant. You are not really. It could look completely different from the did from the beginning, and that is that is value in itself. But you probably would have gotten more out of it out of the te- of the de- decade working on it, working on several I think, pieces. I think there is something to be said about complacency versus contemptness. Like mm-hmm. being contempt with something means you you're you've gotten to it probably gotten to a point where you're happy with it, but being complacent with something is much more dangerous because in order to grow we have to fix issues Mm -hmm. and i think just i think there there is a there is a there is a level of care that needs to be put into understanding that finishing art doesn't mean anything if you haven't put care into it like if you're just making it for the sole purposes of making it and not growing there is a reason why, as a musician, there is a difference between noodling and practicing. There's a difference between doodling and practicing. Yes. Drawing pieces of art for the sake of drawing pieces of art, you will grow, but you will never grow as fast as if you sat down and you practiced, because that is yes. exactly the point of practicing. And some people genuinely don't want to be told that. Some people are like, no, you you pr- you, you grow by doing. And then it's like, no, you will, yes. You will grow by doing, but it will never be as fast as if you sat down and practiced. Yeah, and practice means making mistakes and then absolutely putting it aside and and moving on to the next mistake until you've yep. accumulated mis- so many mistakes that it is your style now. That is this, <laughs> that's how style works. I you cannot change my yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think every artist should should finish their work and then at least in digital because it's harder in, in, in physical mediums finish their work look at something that they know is wrong and fix the one thing and then finish it because i think if you keep doing that you will eventually stop doing the one thing so if like if you have an issues with feet right yeah. uh and, and you, you finish your artwork and you look at your feet and go the feet are wrong fix it <laughs> fix it enough to where it's better not perfect better and then done next time you do it you'll probably get closer to the point where you were before. And eventually you'll get to the point where you'll look at and go, yeah, the feet don't look that bad. Actually, now it's the, you know, the ear profile. Fix that, move on to the next one. And and it, it's kind of a way of, of allowing yourself to finish a piece, but also never stop growing. Because every time you pick out something, you'll be aware of it more the next time you do it. Because the yeah. last thing you just did is I fixed the ear. I don't want to have to fix the ear again. I'm going to do the ear like this this time and then you might step back on the feet and fix the feet but you know yeah and one important thing that i see that people i don't know if this is something that people do anymore but will brag about uh you know never doing any schooling or they're self-taught or whatever and that seems like a red flag a lot of the times because yeah you don't have the fundamentals and you rushed to a place where you were trying to emulate somebody else's stuff. And I'm, I'm not trying to be a stickler for like art should always look like this, but when you're trying to put yourself above other people by putting other people like down by mm-hmm. like saying like things like that, cause that's what you are doing. You're trying to put, make yourself yeah, feel I better by to go to school. Yeah. Mm, I, yeah, e- exactly. Then you should think about why you're saying things like that. Why are There's... you doing that? Why are you putting other people down to pull yourself up? There is a respect that comes with people who teach themselves because the respect that is supposed to come with people who teach themselves is that they have the passion to do it without the form or without feeling like they need to go through the, through the formal route. They just did it. Mm-hmm. And the thing about that, though, is that those who are self-taught will often express their pains of being self-taught if someone doesn't tell you i'm you know i taught myself but man i really wish like i had someone there to tell me i actually had a mentor who yeah would have would have taught me these shortcuts for perspective like i had yeah i i'll i i don't care i'm i'm a self-taught guitarist 
I will tell you right now, the first two or three months of playing the guitar could have been completely fixed in less than five minutes of someone teaching me. Because yep. for the longest time, I was manipulating the neck of the guitar incorrectly. And what ended up happening was I looked into it. And I'm like, why does my wrist hurt? I shouldn't feel any sort of discomfort playing the guitar because that means something's wrong. And I looked it up and I looked at people who held it and I had to change the way I held it. Which is because hard because you're now, taught. yeah, you're now yes. unlearning the mistakes and the bad habits that would have been yep. circumvented had you had lessons or whatever. I have self-taught myself many things, many, many things. Carpentry, plumbing, electrical. I've self-taught myself guitar, programming. I have taught myself a lot of things and I will express every single time that it would have been faster with someone teaching me. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why I was so adamantly expressing asking for help is cheating. No. Because when you are self-taught, no, cheating in a good way. Asking for your, asking for help is cheating because you get to skip the part of failing. It's, you the, get it's definitely that. a cheat code, yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you get to skip the part of the four months of figuring out why my wrist hurts when I play the guitar. Because someone walks up to you and goes, dude, like this. Put your hand in the right position. You go, oh, done. Literally done. Four months gone. Like, yeah. it takes so much longer. The reason why people who are self-taught can sometimes be considerably better from those who, are on, who aren't self-taught is fundamentals. Because when someone has to teach themselves how to do things, you have to understand the fundamentals or you cannot grow. Yes. People and who... There's there are resources online today that were not available when I was young enough to be impressionable and uh, and learn all of those things that would have been valuable lessons and I wouldn't have had to spend longer in school to try and get mm -hmm. to where I was. But I'm not going to step on anybody for like using them these days. I'm, I am happy for how many talented artists there are that are so young that are have all these tools that I didn't have when I was their age, I am thrilled to see them them thrive. Uh, like envious, sure, but envious. like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I would love to have had those when I was when I was young enough to, that it would make a difference. Now I'm at that point, like you were saying, the four months in trying to unlearn habits. I yep. I'm I'm looking at it like, is it worth unlearning twenty years of doing it this way? Or do I just embrace it as what my my methods are, my uh, my style is? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's another thing when we bring it back to where we were talking before about um, the peer group. When you're when you so befriend valuable. the peer group that you're actually on the same level with, they're growing up with the same tools. You all can help one another with the same you knowledge oh base of tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having having a circle of people in the same hobby is it's not even it's not even about the accessibility of knowledge. It's about the the camaraderie that breeds passion. When you surround yourself by people who are passionate about the thing you're passionate about, like you me, will feed into the thing you are passionate about harder. Yeah. That is like like D and D, I still want to Why find that D &D? that group that that I can that can gel that well with that uh, we all have. And you, you also challenge each other too, though. Like of course, yeah. Oh man, this person is really track. cool art. I want to do that. Yeah. I want to I want to be up at that level, or or even better yet, hey man, that was really cool. How did you do that? Yeah, exactly. The difference in today's society is I don't want to tell you. Figure it out yourself. Like Yeah, there's the there's the two camps of people who are completely willing to to share their sources, to share um, the manufacturer that they got their pins made at or or whatever, or the people who were like, No, if I tell you then they'll get too busy, they the mine will be slower. I'm not gonna tell you. Or, Go do all the research yourself. Like Or you run into the boomer mentality. I had to suffer so you do too. Yeah, that's that kind of bleeds out. over well, with that one for sure, yeah. Yeah. Because they're and thinking it is selfishly. Super bad. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, anyway, do we want to bring it back to D and D as we round out this session because it's ten o'clock? And oh uh, yeah, we were gonna yeah wrap up. Yeah, yeah, it went off on a bit of a tangent there. Um, artists, it was artists definitely are a TED talk from you. <laughs> yeah, I I get like that. Artists are valuable, and I wish I wish everyone would, you know, be able to understand why. Um, I do too. Just like any electrical engineer is valuable, and people should understand why. But yeah, exactly. And I'm hoping that with this kind of um, the NPC pack that I'm I'm putting out, for example, and for the other things that I've I've offered, and uh, that I can help other people to value art more, because that's the reason why I I chose to do this project is because people were getting really upset because they're getting people coming to them saying, I. I found your D and D character on Pinterest. How do I play them? Can you give me tips? And it's like, whoa, uh. whoa! I hate everything of what you just said. Um, so I'm trying to like be part of the solution by providing NPCs. But I mean, you can snatch this for your um, your PC, y'all. I don't care. I'm not. Once it's once it's sold to you, you can use it within the D and D realm in as as written out in the terms of service. Um, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I do have, uh, but like, it it it's one of those ways I can try and help mitigate and um that kind of art theft, but also help show people like yeah there is value in in artwork. You're not getting custom artwork, but you're also getting it for so cheap. But you're also paying yeah. an artist. Like it, win win for everybody involved. You are yeah. involved in in making the the circle go around and. Um, and and feeding somebody and and you know, helping out the I wish, the industry. I wish people would also understand like, for for those who are who are still here and who want to share this art pack, I want you to put this into perspective of pot potential buyers. Imagine if you will, you have a character that is this character that you are looking at, and you're commissioning an artist to draw a portrait of them. Mm -hmm. Even if it was like $50, $60, $70, $70, there are 12 of those. That's over $700 of commissionable work for portraits. Right. And you're getting it for definitely not $700. The value comes down cents, to the percent. I believe, for my first, for my first uh, kit, for 10, 10 characters, $5 for all the portraits. Yeah. So, so yeah. $0.50 so, cents for all that art. Perspective is incredibly important. When looking at it, it is not that you have access to all this art it's that these are portraits of all of these different characters that the same amount of work had to go into drawing the portraits as a commission that did for that it, you know obviously did for the art pack uh and and that can kind of turn the tides for people buying it or not when they look at the cost of like yeah if i had to get this particular person commissioned to be this and this one to be this and Wow, this yeah. is all of a sudden way more worth it than just looking at it as a bunch of NPCs that I can just kind of throw in the game. Exactly. It's it's one of those ways that you can help humble yourself. Because I know there's going to be people who are always going to be like, all right, but there's free uh, art on Google Images and I'll find it and I'll just throw this guy in my game. And it's like, all right, I'm never going to reach that guy. I'm never going to help you know, change his mind. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm just going to try and ignore the best I can, help the people who can't afford the $5. Here's 10 pieces of art. Uh, this one is going to be about 20, probably, uh, characters, uh, all portraits. Uh, I can give a, just, just to round this out, I can give a, a free preview of all the sketches of, let me just like shove her in a folder, but, uh, uh yeah, if them? we, yeah, if you want to, if you want to go through everything and of the ones I have so far, yeah, we'll 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 look through. So I've got this mermaid girl. Ooh. We've got the dwarven woman we drew at the beginning of the stream. Okay, that is not synced up with me because I heard this mermaid girl, and then you and then you were still on the you were still. Okay, on I'll the, leave uh... him for longer because apparently I'm, I'm out of sync. No, no. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. I just I, I got thrown off for a second because I was like Because you're listening what? to me <laughs> you're listening to me in the Discord yeah. and and yeah. Okay. 
I think this is gonna be more synced if I just yeah for the for the actual stream. No, no, it's okay. You can you can go ahead. It's fine. It's the just, dwarven, it's the, yeah, the dwarven woman, um, like we like we had before. We have an, mm. a a saggy old woman, as I have very flatteringly named her <laughs> for her file. Uh, we've got this broken nose halfling guy. So you you need you need some of those like rough and tumble like thief thieves guild types as well as the higher borns. We've got a leprechaun, as suggested by you, are. <laughs> oh yeah, the leprechaun. We've got this old 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 man leprechaun. Uh, uh was, what do they what do they end up doing? Like the leprechaun that would kick your ass or something like that? Like... <laughs> Probably. I mean, this is a villain hey, after to all. The end of the rainbow. <laughs> now you're fighting me for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Roll initiative. <laughs> We've got this tiefling noble lady. We've got this creepy ass ghost child. Apparently, it was absolutely not selected for. Which is the seven, which I'll do next time. I'll do maybe I'll do another stream next week. We'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, because I I oh. like I like doing these things. You with should the, hmm? you should put like a a, a recommendation. Um, a death wound. Mm-hmm. Like if you draw the, it slightly transparent and draw like a, a do you see this white this necklace yeah do you know that story that story where um the girl who gets it's an older woman who uh like a young young woman but like an older girl um where she got the ribbon tied around her neck and then she uh on her wedding night uh i think it was on her wedding night or like some some versions of the story she she tells her husband not to ever remove the the ribbon and because oh, uh, her head comes off, right? Because her head comes off, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna play oh, with that's that. A deep memory. Holy I'm gonna, crap. I'm gonna play with that. There's a ribbon around this girl's neck, and when that comes off, man, there's gonna be phase two of like, uh, head, nearly head, nearly headness. Uh, like, yeah. Some of these, some of oh, these uh, packs, uh, or some of these characters that's pack, I, I did consider having like a phase one, phase two. Like I have mm-hmm. hags were the ones that were like I didn't draw them yet, but uh, they were suggested, and I was considering the 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 very pretty like disguised version of the hag, and then the hag hag version, um, where they're yeah, like yeah. they're so that actually might bloat out this pack even bigger. So I might split it to tens because I had an idea to keep them all as like ten characters, ten should characters. Do, should you do like a mini boss pack? Where mm, like I could all that, the yeah. creatures have like a like, phase one, phase two kind of thing. Yeah, and then you can do like a big boss pack where it's like a single creature with like you know big health pool, unique mm-hmm. mechanics, and stuff like that. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. So yes, ghost girl, ghost child. I have had this noble vampire guy, cool scar over his eye, and you know that kind of thing. Um, I tried. Wait, was to... that? Oh, was it? Is it the leprechaun in the in the vampire? Is that what we were talking about that one time? Yes, and I did I did work on the uh, vampire and the leprechaun. Uh, I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. So so oh. he, so he's got that. Um, and there's a Goliath barbarian dude, lightning strikes all over his face. I'm imagining he was like a storm herald barbarian because okay, you know, uh, I just I just love that stuff. Uh, I love the ear cut out. That's great. Yeah, I love that kind of like battle wound type of thing. Uh, but just like subtle also, enough I mean, piercings. that <laughs> maybe I mean, like eyebrow piercings. Yeah, maybe. Uh, celestials, cool. got... lightning rods, like lightning little rod. like little pole piercings right under his tattoos. <laughs> I can I can do that. Yeah. I've got a couple of celestials because I was talking at the beginning of the stream that there's not enough celestial uh, mm. that you can fight. Uh, that's another thing I was pl- I was planning on debating on whether the as I whether I should release the PDFs with like um uh you know the the stats and stuff like that. I did that for my first mm-hmm. pack. It seemed like it went over well because I, I think that that pack pack thing like with the PDF sells more than the individual tokens, so I might um, make celestial. Yeah, because the uh, value. I, I would, as a DM, the value comes from being able to the pull the concept. entire yeah the entire creature. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, 
so this is one of the celestials I was trying to figure out unique ways to show a celestial um, rather than fall back on oh my God. the okay, typical yeah. so there's this there's this kind of uh, idea there's this kind where it's more biblical with the, all the eyes and the, the the halo that is behind the head and not like a what we imagine the halo is to be on top of the head is actually in a lot of biblical things are just a circle behind the head. Behind the head. Yeah, yeah like so a glow he's light got, or whatever. So he's got more of that. This guy's like got a youthful feel, so I feel like he would be a mischievous type of celestial who is probably the first time. I, he... I just kind of want to take his eyes away, like the, the actual normal eyes, <laughs> and just have everything else. Creepy. Or like, uh, yeah. Or, or have the concept of like, um, uh, in his bio, like he has all the other eyes closed. And then he has like maybe like the whole eyes on the like tattoo eyes or actual eyes on the back of his hands, or he puts them up over his closed eyes, and then everything else opens. Oh, that's terrifying. Like, as like the concept of being, I see through the world as a as a human being and as a walker when I look through the same two eyes you do. And then he closes his eyes and covers them with his <laughs> hand, and all of the other ones open, and they go. But this is how the world truly is. Ah, terrifying. Uh, so there's that guy, and I'll keep that in mind for the stats. Uh, there he is a tabaxi thief, um, based on your character, as mentioned before. Oh, yeah, I love that boy. <laughs> I like the face you gave him. The confused, like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like he wants to be angry, but he's also not sure. So confused. Why yeah, you just no insulted him? Like, yeah. Uh, oh, and so good. I love my boy. and then like a a wood elf, fayish type of, like druidish, type lady. Um, hmm. Yeah, if you get access to this pack, you'll have access to one of my OCs. Uh, I am gonna. I, I do want to talk about him just a tiny bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably gonna be him in an alternate alternate way. Um, Fall definitely had the capabilities of going down a not great route based on his upbringing. Uh, he was a rogue-styled character who basically his parents, um, uh, I think more specifically his mother, kind of sold him out on on something that they did wrong and ultimately got him exiled from his, his birthplace. Uh, so in response to that, he basically went, well, fine, I'll build my own Thieves Guild. <laughs> uh, and went to Waterdeep, which is probably not going to be in the lore, but he went to a different city. Mm -hmm. in order to essentially become uh, a thieves guild or or criminal organization leader not in the way of like i'm gonna rule this town with an iron fist but more so as like a you come to me you must be very desperate for money type of person like a mob leader <laughs> who, who works symbiotically with the the city and not trying to cause a lot of trouble because he wants to continue existing that way mm -hmm. so a big thing about this villainous pack is that these villains aren't cut and dry. And that is a huge thing with me personally when I do D&D is that the villains are sympathetic villains. They're, they, are, they are the people who you go, I understand how you got there, but that doesn't make it right. And the importance comes from the, I understand how you got there. Because obviously, Fall being a criminal organization leader is not exactly a good thing. But when he tells you the story of my mom and dad set me up to fail when I was, you know, 11 or 12 years old and put something that wronged me when I was a kid. And now that's basically been my vendetta for life. You can't tell me what to do. I'm going to do this. Yeah, it's but like how a... far, depending on what, what the party composition is and what the type of players are, how how far do you ever get with some, some villains to find out that stuff? Do you ever yeah. get to find out the the why? Or do you, do your players like you know, run in uh, Leroy Jenkins and him. Leroy, and just beat the crap out of him, yeah. Yeah, or they have their own biases because of their character's outlook on the world, and they're, they're so lawful good that they're almost evil because any wrong that he has <laughs> done is, yeah, is is unacceptable and unforgivable and, and, and that kind of thing. So I'll yeah, leave so that to you for giving him his falls yeah, uh, uh, stat wanna, block yeah. for for that um yeah fall falls falls 
I love him. I also love Trovic. I, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to put him in the pack. I no, I, I don't think so. But Fall, yeah. yes. Uh, yes. Trovic is so good. Yes, yes, okay, he is. Sorry. But I gotta wrap up. The yeah, so um, you can find all my information on on Twitter under Quiet's News, and um, on Coffee as there. as there's yeah, there's a button there for um finding my packs. Yeah, I think I think it will be a great pack. I'm really excited about um, uh, uh the the the. The theme that was voted upon that was alluring villains, and I love that because it's just like you've got to have that whole. They could, I, they could convince me, and I would, and yeah. I stopped for a second, and I think maybe in a different world, in a different world, in a different light, we could have been they're friends. Not, they're not wrong. Or yeah, they could have, they could not be wrong, but we could have been friends had we not met under you these just, circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I love that kind of moral grayness for my games too. Um, the, sometimes it's fun to throw obviously an obviously evil character, and and anybody who picks up these cat packs can do whatever you want to yeah, exactly. uh, the personalities of these characters. I I would love to hear it. I would love to hear um, about your games, and and especially if you use these characters. Uh, yeah, you can. F- I, I don't know when this pack's coming out. Um, I'm trying to work on it, you know, between work. But um, excited for when it's. Uh, the can... bags under the eyes of the European YouTuber that you can <laughs> put all of the <laughs> interpretations of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great. Uh, especially if I keep adding to it, I gotta cut it off at some point. I'm gonna cut off either the, do the tens, like ten characters for just keep it consistent or I'm going to do this one as a mega pack. Not sure yet. You'll have to watch uh, <laughs> my my socials <laughs> to, to find that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, thanks for, for showing up and thanks to you R for giving us a TED talk. Uh, moral, yeah, morals and all that. <laughs> thanks everybody. Have a okay. great night. Bye everyone. Yeah.